Hey guys, this is Sarah again. Um, today we are going to talk about purses and then some silver trays that I found. So we'll start with some of the purses. I have three of them. Let's do the orange one first since it's my favorite. Um, I found this little gem at a rummage sale. It's got a beautiful retro feel, probably around the 70s is my guess. And I think it just looks beautiful, like whatever color you put it against and you can even match your jewelry. I have a little orange in here. It matches the purse really well. And it can just look good no matter where you go. I mean, I would wear it going out to the club because it just gives you that vibe, that little bit of a different feel that it's really nice when you're looking for boys out of the club, if you hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and then a little classier. We, I found this guy at a flea market. I wasn't completely sure what decade it was from at first, but after a little bit of research, I would guess probably like the 50s because the floral pattern on here, the large flowers, were really popular during that time. And I don't have a black dress or I would have showed you with it, but even with this, something dark, it just really shines and the gold thread in it really looks really pretty. And I just love it. Just a cute little thing that you could carry with you on a night where you go to like a fundraiser event or go to see, I don't know, your boss. It just kind of gives you a little bit of a, I don't know, special little flair. Like you know what you're wearing and you know you're rocking it. Yeah, that's what I'd wear it for at least. And then the last purse I have is a little bit bigger. It's an oversized clutch with some beautiful designs of grapes and leaves on it that kind of have a Roman feel to it. I love it because you can just tuck it right under your arm and hold it relaxed or up here, whatever way you want to hold it, and had a little clip that holds it, and the inside is leather too, so it's just a really little pretty thing. I think leather classes up just about anything and really gives you a flair that says who you are, whether that be a little bit of a biker chick or just like a little bit hippie. It can go either way depending on what you're wearing. So that's what I have recently for purses. Hopefully I'll find some more. But we're going to move on to some of the silver platters I found. And I'm going to give you a little tip on how to get like the tarnish off. So these are a few of the things I found. I have two like this. And this one I've shined up so you can see everything behind me. Um, it just looks so pretty. It was so tarnished. Let's see. The back of this I have not polished yet. It's still pretty. But it definitely doesn't shine as much. The image is a little bit more warped. And that's kind of what you get if you don't polish them. And then these are some really cool old ones. This guy, he's a little harder to polish, but if you look at the back, see if you can get a closer picture. It's actually a wedding gift for someone from 1908. Let me see the names. I can't, it's really fancy cursive, so it's a little harder to read, but I can read the 1908 and a wedding gift. So it's definitely something that's got a lot of history to it, and I'm surprised someone sold it, but I guess they didn't know or couldn't read the cursive. Who knows? But then this is the last one I have. It's been a little harder to clean. i got to get a few more things to clean. It's still got some spots, but it's got some really intricate designs up here that I can just imagine being put in a cabinet and being shown off and just being a beautiful piece to a house. And the back I also didn't clean yet. You can see how different it is without the cleaning done to it compared to the front. And what you need to do, it's actually not that complicated. Um, you can go to Walmart, even there, or Home Depot or anywhere that's close to you, and pick up a silver tarnish cleaner. It can be liquid or cream. I tend to prefer creams because they're a little easier to apply and to control to make sure you get them right where you want to. And you can just rub them over the surface really softly. You don't want to add any more scratches. Generally use a sponge or a really cotton towel, something like that. And then, like for this one, how it's got all the intricate parts right up here. It's really hard to get in there with like a cloth and actually get at it. So a tip I learned is you can actually use a toothbrush that you're not obviously not using anymore and just scrub at it. You're gonna maybe put a few more scratches in it but it's really worth it to get that tarnish off and to make it shine again. So that's all I can really think about. I mean I guess just make sure you buff it off when you're done. You just wash it off with some warm water and then you'll have a beautiful plate. Like this. Yeah. So thanks for watching and feel free to comment or tell me anything you'd like to see on a future video. I'll make sure I keep updating and show you some of the things I've found.
Thanks. Bye.